Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ruohan Li from Microsoft. Today is my great pleasure to present to you our paper entitled Exposing Query Identification for Search Transparency. It is a joint work with Jianxiang, Bascar, Fernando, and Asha. Um, so the search system controlled the exposure of ranked content to the searches. And the document retrieval is a very common term in both uh, academia and also the uh, real world application. So it is given a query, the document retrieval system will retrieve a ranked list of documents from a large document corpus ranked by their uh, estimated relevance to the query. Uh, however, our paper is focusing on a reversing process, which is exposing query identification, because the problem of identifying which queries expose a given piece of content in ranked results is an important and yet relatively underexplored uh, search transparency challenge. So it is given a document and a specified document retrieval system. The exposing query identification system will retrieve a ranked list of queries from a query log uh, ranked by their probability of exposing the document in the document retrieval system. So here's a simple illustration. Uh, if you see the blue document here, you can see that it is ranked as the first and uh, for the first query and ranked as the fourth for the second queries. Therefore, if we are asking the exposing query uh, for this blue document, it is first uh, is the first query and then the second query. So what are the use cases for the exposing queries? From the content creator's per perspective, there are desirable exposure and undesirable exposure. For desirable exposure, uh, for example, the job search, advertising, or the search engine optimizations. For undesirable exposure, for example, the right to be forgotten, uh, or some offensive or harmful searches that the content creator would like to avoid or they don't, don't want their content to be linked to their private or sensitive information. Uh, it is also meaningful uh, for, to identify the exposing queries from the service provider's perspective. So the search engines can provide users with more fine-grained uh, exposure control mechanisms, which is not available in the current search engines anywhere. Also, it can enable the transparency about the search contest and uh, potentially prevent the unintended leakage of information, especially uh, private information, which is a, an important topic in the current era. Um, so first, we derive the evaluation metrics. Uh, let's first look into some common evaluation metric for document retrieval model. Um, so usually they have the form of um, the sum of the cumulative uh, quality score over all items in the top ranking results, weighted by the probability um, that the searcher inspect a certain document at a given rank. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, like, for example, for normalized discounted cumulative gain, NDCG, they will also normalize the, the metrics by dividing the ideal metric. Therefore, we, uh, we derived our uh, ranked exposure list quality uh, to be the evaluation metric for the exposing query identification problem. Um, so we use the D to Q here to represent the exposing query retrieval, which is from document to a ranked list of queries. So the side D, a side D here is the uh, retrieved ranked list of queries uh, in response to the document D. Uh, so uh, we can see that the uh, the GQI is the quality score for uh, the query QI given the document D. So it should be valued uh, as the uh, user browsing model in the document retrieval. So after we plug in the value, we have the final form for the rel queue. So it is based on two users. Uh, one is the searcher and the other one is the content creator. Uh, in this study, we spent uh, in this study, we consider some special case with the assumptions of user behavior model. Uh, first, if we uh, assume that both user behavior model is based on the ranked bias precision, and after some derivation, we will have this form uh, where the gamma is the persistent parameter uh, ranged from zero to one. So, um, uh, uh, so one means that uh, it, uh, the searcher will exhaustively inspect the ranked list. Uh, also, we can assume the different combinations of user models. Uh, for example, we can assume the document retrieval model is uh, follow an NDCG, and the exposing query retrieval, we have an exhaustive 
uh, inspection. Uh, so here comes to the experiment setting. We use the MS Marco dataset, which contains 8.8 .8 million passages and uh, more than 500K uh, relevant queries. And for the document retrieval model, we consider two general class. Uh, first class is the traditional retrieval model. We use BM25 as an example. And the other class is the embedding-based um, retrieval model. Uh, we use the approximate nearest neighbor negative contrastive estimation ANZ pro proposed by Xiong and his uh, co-writers. And in the experiment, we set the number of uh, queries to be, uh, uh, the number of um, documents to be exposed by queries, and also the number of exposing queries for each document to be 100 for both. And we consider three types of uh, users. So the exhaustive user with uh, the persistent parameter gamma equals to one, and high patients users with uh, gamma equals to 0 0.9, and average patients users with gamma equals to 0 0.5. Um, so first I will talk about the EQI for the traditional search systems. So here we have three solutions here. Um, the, the brute force is just uh, go through all the query logs and find their top 100 documents. And then for each document, we will go through the cache results to find um, uh, what are the exposing queries for each of them. However, the brute force, although have 100% uh, accurate, uh, accuracy. However, it is uh, very time consuming in terms of uh, the computational capacity. Therefore, we also propose a, a simple solutions, which is uh, we adopt the SRNI uh, toolkit to index the query log and issue the document as pseudo queries. Uh, we then tune the model parameters uh, to, um, to further improve the results, which is uh, represent SBM25 tune here. So you can see that we have slightly better results for the BM25 tuned. However, because the queries uh, are of short indexed, so we can see that the gap is not large. Uh, and our main focus for this paper is on the EQI for the embedding-based search systems. So for the document retrieval model, we have a, an encoder for both the query and document, and we will use some similarity uh, score to compute um, the relevance between the two. Uh, for example, for ANCE is using the dot product. And ideally, we should have a, a given a query, we should have higher similarity with the document that are more uh, that is more relevant to the query. And the pairwise approach can be used to uh, train the neural network, which is minimize the cross entropy loss. And in this case, to find the top in relevant documents, it is equivalent to find the K, uh, in, uh, nearest neighbors of a query. So for the exposing query retrieval model, we aim to learn a, an encoder uh, for both query and document so that uh, given a document D, the similarity score is higher for the queries that rank document D at a higher rank. Uh, we can also use the pairwise approach to minimize the cross entropy uh, loss while training. So in this case, in this new embedding space, uh, we can find the, uh, to find the top and exposing queries is equivalent to find the um, nearest neighbors, uh, nearest neighbor queries given a document. So the most common question we receive is why not search for a document in the document retrieval embedding space? Uh, so here I use a, uh, an example to illustrate that it is a, an asymmetric problem. So in this graph, you can see that, uh, for example, the embedding space is only 2D. The document D is closest to the query one and then query two, query three. However, the ground truth exposing query rank list is the uh, exact opposite. So although the document D is the furthest from the query three, but the query three ranked document D at top two. So it should be ranked as uh, first in the exposing query rank list. Therefore, our goal is to learn a new embedding space such that a, a, a KNN search in the new embedding space um, will approximate the reverse KNN search in the original document retrieval embedding space. Um, uh, so the training data generation is actually one of the biggest challenge for this uh, study. Um, because uh, we need to make sure that 
uh, the model is only exposed to a small proportion of the query log and also a small proportion of the document corpus. Here, what we do is we subsample the query uh, 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 training queries uh, from the entire queries that we have. And also we should make sure the documents um, in the training data should at least have one query in the training queries that retrieve them in the top end results. And also um, we should uh, do, a, and we do a proper sampling to find the nearest uh, uh, neighbors of the, uh, of the training document so that we can have a good representation of the current sample distribution of queries around each training document. Uh, for the network architecture, we propose two solutions. Um, one is append and the other one is residual. So we fix the original uh, document retrieval encoder uh, while, while training. So we only uh, train a fit forward network on top of that. So the append means that we will, uh, the output size is much smaller than the input size and we will concatenate the two vectors to represent the uh, query and document in the new embedding space. And for the residual uh, network, we will uh, with uh, enable the identity mapping so that we will add up the uh, new vector with the same size as the input with the original one. Uh, for both methods, we aim at um, to save the computational capacity and also avoid overfitting. Uh, the EQI for the, uh, here are the key results. Um, so for the training set, we only use 9% of queries, which is 50K and use 2% of the passages, which is 200K. Um, and the brute force, uh, the same as the BM25, it has the 100% accurate. Uh, the ANC reverse here means that we do uh, a K nearest uh, neighbor search in the original embedding space. So you can see that uh, it performs pretty bad when the uh, user model is less patient. And the append and residual, have much, uh, have much better uh, performance compared to the baseline model. And the test set here is uh, 20K passages, we, which are not included in this 200K uh, training passages. And uh, we have uh, extracted their top 100 exposing queries from the full query log. Um, so here's some illustration of how the transformation of the original embedding space actually help with identifying the exposing queries. So here the X axis is the ranking position in the exposing query retrieval model. So it is 100 uh, and the Y axis is the ranking position in the document retrieval model. So we use the N minus the actual rank so that the higher bar means um, the doc, uh, uh, means that the document is retrieved as a higher rank in the original document retrieval model. So ideally, this graph should be um, uh, ranked the bar from the highest to the lowest with no, bar, uh, with no gap in between. So for the four passages that we present here, except for the passage three, we can observe a better performance for the residual model compared to the reverse model. Um, for, the, for example, for passage one, uh, the ANC reverse, you can see that there are only a limited number of exposing queries um, that are closest to the document. And after transform the embedding space, we observe much more exposing queries uh, in the top 100. Um, and the passage three and passage four, we can see that uh, for the document that are relatively um, low exposure to the queries, the values of the real queue is uh, very sensitive to the uh, high ranking, uh, uh, highly exposure queries. So here we also um, uh, study the behavior uh, when we change the user um, model. Uh, so we change the uh, parameters from 0 0.1 to one for both two user models. And you can see that First, compare the left and right. We can see that the right always has a better performance than the left-hand side baseline model. And also, uh, we, uh, the test difficulty is always uh, simpler for when, the, uh, when the searchers or the content creator inspect fully, the, exhaustively, the rank list. Um, the impact of the training data sets is that we uh, better um, 
so, so we change the number of training queries and passages. We can see that the increasing the number of training sites will uh, have uh, diminishing returns. So we can have a good enough uh, performance even with a small sample of queries and passages. And also we studied the in, uh, impact of expanding query collections. So we can see that um, the tax has become difficult when the query corporate size is very large. Uh, and also they kind of, uh, uh, they kind of um, uh, decreasing rate drop with larger training sample size. So they can converge uh, better when we have a large sample size. So the main contributions of this paper is that we derived an evaluation metric, uh, RELQ, that jointly models the behavior of the document retrieval and the exposing query identification system. And also we study the feasibility of approximate the EQI uh, for two classes of search system, including traditional and embedding-based search system. And also we demonstrate the potential of improving baseline EQI approaches through metric learning for the embedding-based search system. Uh, yeah, that's all for my presentation today, and uh, welcome any questions. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions for the speaker? You can use the hands tool or write your question in the chat. If not, uh, thank you very much, Rohan, for your presentation. I had one question, but we are a little tight on time. Maybe I'll ask you on the private chat about the bias that you comment on the paper. And I think that's a very interesting point, but I'll, I'll sure. ask you in the, or either later or in the chat thread. Thank you for that.